Tonight, I'm gonna try the oldest, excuse me, Chinese restaurant in San Francisco. I'll put the name of the restaurant on the screen right now. I don't know if it's called Sam Wo or Sam Wu. I have no idea. I think it's probably Cantonese. We're gonna meet up with a huge group and we are gonna go have some dinner. I need a walk like that. <laughs> it's huge. Paparazzi coming through. <laughs> show you everything we ate at the restaurant and then stick around to the end so you can hear a little bit of the background about the oldest Chinese restaurant in San Francisco. It's like wasabi. It's, like, it's all good. I'm crying but I'll finish it with sake. It's like, not amazing. But good. This is so fragrant. This is the raw fish salad. It smells it smells like ginger and like, I don't know, other things I don't know. Mm. It's good. Yeah. We're gonna talk about the raw fish salad later. I'm still processing. Okay, I'm gonna try this wonton. The wonton's boring, no bother. Beef stew. Beef stew. Very typical Cantonese. I'm gonna try some of the broth first. Ooh, that reminds me of China. I really like the beef stew. So that's really good. I'm gonna try this uh, congee or rice porridge. And this is a century egg or a preserved egg. So we'll see how that goes. It's good, it's very plain. I'm gonna try the egg now. I love it. You like it? I love it. It's too very bad. It's so bad. Why? I think it's just me. I don't think it's bad. I think it's just me. I hate it. Chicken and string bean, really good. Not fun to Not very authentic, but talk about that raw fish salad. Shu Ting and I were probably the only people at the table that actually liked it. It was what it sounds like. It was a bunch of raw fish on a plate with a lot of like herbs and like really flavorful vegetables and stuff. So Shu Ting actually had a little bit of insider info on it. It is modeled after the Burmese tea salad, which I had never heard of before. I'm gonna Google it right now. It's just a lot of different stuff on a plate. Um, Google it if you wanna see what I mean. They all look a little bit different. I'm sure there's some elements that are the same. There's like nuts, there's some lemon wedges, there's a lot of vegetables. It's all chopped up pretty small. But this was like a concept with raw fish. So I enjoyed it. I did not enjoy the, the ginger pieces in there, but I did enjoy the fish a lot. I thought it tasted super good. It was very fresh tasting, good texture. The only thing that was weird about it was that the fish, like the predominant flavor of the fish was cinnamon. It just didn't compute in my head and I still don't think I've fully processed it. It's definitely the most expensive dish on their menu. We got it because we had to try it. I'm glad we did because it was really unique. You know how I am here on this channel. I am very honest so um, I'm just gonna be very upfront about it. I did not think that the food was amazing. If I were to go back there I would absolutely get the beef stew and actually I may have labeled it incorrectly. I labeled it as a soup but it might actually be under entree. I'm pretty sure on their menu. I don't know. There's two different kinds of beef stew but I'm sure it's like similar broth at least. I thought the chow mein was 
was like really good. I don't even really like chow mein that much. Like it's fine. It's just fried noodles. Like who doesn't like it? But you know, it's not like something I order. I would order it there. It's really good. But those are just about the only two things on the menu that really stuck out to me, to be honest. And we got a lot of the like house specials. So for me, good Mong Kok Bakery is still at the top of my list for Chinatown. But I do want to share a little bit of the history. Um, our friends had actually been to this restaurant many, many years ago, back when it was in an old space um, on Washington Street. And my friends were saying like, yeah, it was really interesting because they used what they, a dumb waiter, I think it's called. It's like a food elevator. And then they like hoist it up to the like next floor. Apparently it was in a very skinny, very tall building. It was like three stories. And the restaurant went up in that location in 1906. So they have been around for over a hundred years in Chinatown. It was at the time kind of a divey, hole in the wall, like cheap place. They were always apparently known for those barbecue pork um, rice noodle roll things and for their juke, which is the rice porridge. It was founded by three siblings from Taishan. Most things in Chinatown have to do with southern China more way more so than any other area of China a lot of people are from like Hong Kong um, Guangdong like that was a big like port area and um, there's a big migration over to San Francisco I want to make a video about this later on I want to go visit the Chinese Historical Society and I want to go visit Angel Island but anyways back to the restaurant so they had to shut down in 2012 because of health code violations and apparently it was a whole thing with the building and they would have had to like pay like almost half a million dollars to like redo this whole building and bring it up to code so instead what they did is they spent several years unfortunately looking for a new space so they were completely shut down from april 2012 all the way through early 2015. this one is on clay street it's still a multi-story building it's still very tiny you still walk right through the kitchen when you go through it so it's definitely has that like authentic old time you like chinatown vibe so i don't know our friends were saying that the food that they had back in the day really left an impression on them like when they were at the old like hole in the wall version of this restaurant so it makes me wonder like like if the unhealthy atmosphere or like some of the practices of the restaurant made the food taste better because like let's be real China doesn't have an FDA so you eat this street food in China that's just absolutely incredible you go to these like mom and pop hole in the wall shops you eat food that's just like blows your mind it's so good and it's not up to health code because you're in China by the way if you want to see my China videos I'll have some links down below to those I was there for about nine months so I ate a lot of food but now that it's up to American health code my friends were like it doesn't taste the same it's not as good so it makes me wonder you know what had to change to be honest I'd rather have the dirty food I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of crap about that in the comments <laughs> so I feel really honored that I got to go to this restaurant it's really really cool it's very affordable it is not an expensive experience at all we got a lot of food and but there was a lot of us so it's only about $20 a person which is really not bad at all for San Francisco if you've ever been to this restaurant definitely comment down below if you're going to San Francisco if you're going to China comment below I want to hear what you are up to and also if there's something else you want me to film in San Francisco let me know in the comments I will talk to you guys next week life has been crazy so I'm actually gonna be doing a live stream so I can update you all on why life's been crazy and we can just hang out and chat that's probably gonna be um, next Friday so I will see you guys then thank you for watching okay bye <laughs>